Amen? Praise the Lord. All glory to God. Just one quick note. Um, Thomas, it's clear that you were discipled by your father. <laughs> right, Susan? Mom, interject, please. If you want to follow in your Bibles, you can. Our message is going to be up on the screen. I'm going to go just a few minutes, of course. Our preaching message will be a little bit of a devotional, but when we get into the Word of God, it's devoting ourselves to the Lord and to His Word. Galatians chapter number 4, I've been preaching through Galatians, so I'm just going to use the first couple of verses, and I just want to... Uh, really speak to our seniors, our teens, and all of you, of course, in the Spirit of God, and uh, just see what God would have us to receive this morning. Consider this. Your influence, adults, older people, and others, can either be effective or ineffective. And at this point right now, you would say, hey, so far, so good. Praise the Lord through the bumps and bruises and the, the trials and the testings. And I'm not here to declare all your 10 greatest warnings or challenges or things like that. Josh has been doing that on a weekly basis. Addie has been doing that. The servant team have been doing that. In fact, let me just do that really quick. If you are in the servant team in the youth group, would you please stand? Please stand. Come on, you got to stand up one more time. We want to recognize you and say thank you. Thank you for your tireless service unto the Lord because your influence makes so much of a difference. Whether or not, again, you are effective will be in the fruit from the primed ground that you pray the young people continue to walk in, which then behooves us as adults, are we in the same place? You have an identity today, whatever it may be, young people. Seniors, you know that you're identified by a lot of different things, some by your hair, of course, as I heard today, others by maybe your step into the military, maybe others by... Um, going after a degree in some area that will really be strong and powerful. By the way, I think this is the smartest group of seniors ever. Way to go. Way to go. Way to go. Gosh. Well, there's some before. Oh, no. Why did you think I was smart? Oh. But it says up there, today you identify as a senior, a teenager, a graduate, but you also identify as a believer in Jesus Christ. Identity becomes more important as the post-teen years unfold. So what will shape your identity? Will it be the people that have been in your past that have really built in a foundation, your mom, your dad, your grandparents, your brothers and sisters in the Lord, your local church, those youth pastor, youth uh, servant leaders, all those that have uh, poured into you. What will shape your identity? Because today, if you really consider um, the world that we live in, and, and uh, people say, oh, it's, a, it's the hardest, the greatest, the most difficult. We always use EST, and you know how I am about it. Go, Why do we always have to be this, put the superlative on everything? This is just your time that you live in. You live in a time at your age, at 18 years old, where you're dealing with what you're dealing with. And I dealt with the things that I dealt with at 18 years old and everybody else in this room. And today, I just want you to know that, as I mentioned a moment ago, your identity in the Lord Jesus Christ is paramount. And when you say, okay, well, what are you going to speak on? Identity in Jesus. I said identity in Jesus Christ today just for a minute or two. It says in the scriptures in Galatians chapter number four, verse number one, now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father. What does that simply mean? It simply means that Paul the Apostle in the local church, we spoke about this two or three weeks ago, is saying, hey, you are in a certain position in your life, in a certain uh, relegated position of saying, okay, 
I'm in the family as a child, and as it says, differing nothing from a servant, though you be Lord of all, which means very simply, hey, as a child, you're just treated just like a servant in the family. But then there's an appointed time of the father when you become recognized as, hey, an heir. You're an adopted son. When you come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior, what happens to you? You are now adopted into the family of God. It goes on in verse number three, and it says this, even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. When we were lost, we were children, and that was what was running our lives. We were heirs of the world's great gift, which if you follow the world without Jesus Christ as Savior and you never call in the name of the Lord as Savior, then the world will say, I'm happy to take you to hell with me. That's my great gift to you. That's going to be my inheritance for you, is that if you follow yourself and follow the, Lord, uh, follow the world and follow the prince of the power of this heir, the devil, you will get exactly what the bondage of the elements of this world is. That's where lost people live. If you're lost today, then you're under the bondage of the elements of the world. Verse number four, though, says, but when the fullness of the time was come, when God said, it's time to send my son from glory, hallelujah, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, as it says in verse number five, to redeem them that were under the law, that, were, that we might receive the adoption of sons. So what do we got? You're a teenager, you're a graduate, you're a future whatever. You are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. You identify with Jesus. If you're not saved today, senior, look deep in your heart and sort that out. Because lost, you are not a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ and called in the name of the Lord. And so you're not in the adoption of the sons. But if you're in the adoption of sons, you remember when you got saved, as Elena is breaking that down and saying, thank you everyone in the children's ministry, the youth ministry, this church, for teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ all these years that I would come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. You said, thank you, Dad, for discipling me and teaching me the Bible. The kids are saying to Mindy, thank you for homeschooling me. Gosh, you guys, when you think about all that people have put into you and all the pouring in of other people into your life, most of all, the Lord Jesus Christ has poured more into you than anyone. And because of that identity in Jesus Christ, I just want to show you some things this morning rather quickly about how in your identity in Christ, you say, well, I just need to know all the dispensations of the Bible. That's important. But that's not more important than knowing who you are in the Lord Jesus Christ. You can study the Word of God, and please, I pray that you would study. Students, study the Bible. I can't read. Oh, you can learn how to read. If you don't understand what something says, read it again. And I heard that you can read it again. And if you don't know how it's pronounced, then you pull it up on one of those little app things, and somebody's voice will come out, and they'll speak it for you. What a time we live in. I heard from a Bible teacher two weeks ago. They said, there is no excuse for being stupid anymore. You can all laugh. It's okay. There's no excuse. You can look up everything on the internet. Find everything you want. You can figure out how to pronounce words. When I was reading through the Bible and I first got into those things and you're reading through Nehemiah or Chronicles, I'm going, I still do that. Everybody would witness that. But when you're reading the Bible, you say, how do you pronounce words? We'll get a Bible that has the accent they use in it, has all the different accents. In your Bible, you do. That Bible, doesn't it have those little things and the breakups and stuff like that? Has it got in there, Alec? Alex, you ask him. He has all the answers, by the way. That's good. Don't forget asking him. So here, really simply, three things. You identify in Jesus, your identity in Jesus. This is the way I want you to grab the first one. You find it in God's sonship. You don't just find it in your parental kinship. Now, parents, don't throw anything at me. Just listen now. Listen. One of the hardest things for parents to get over, but when you get over it early, it's good, is that you are a caretaker of a child that really belongs to God Almighty who made him or her. And when they get saved, you are the caretaker. 
in the shepherd of their lives on this earth, but the father is going to take care of his adopted children much better than you will do. Parents, let them grab a handle on that. And by the way, Alec, if you write down or look at Galatians 2.20, you'll realize that it's not just your faith that you're to live by. You're to live by the faith of the Son of God who loved you and gave his life for you. Good teaching, Mom and Dad. Good teaching. Because you need to stand in your identity in Jesus and God's sonship will take you a long way. Oftentimes I read the scriptures through these these glasses that are tainted with our own flesh. And we need to read them through the Holy Spirit of God as a believer and understand that we are the sons of God. It says up there in 1 John chapter number, excuse me, oh, I forgot. Oh, yeah, go to, thank you for following me. Boy, I can be crazy up there. That's my daughter trying to keep up with her crazy father. Lo, children, our heritage of the Lord. Remember, a heritage of the Lord. Heritage of Tom? No, heritage of the Lord. They belong to the Lord. And you and I were given them to hang out for a while. We ought to do the job that we're supposed to do as best we can in the Lord. Because it says there, the fruit of the womb is his reward. First John chapter number 3, one of my favorite passages. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. That we should be called the sons of God. When you got saved, born again, you became a son of God. You're in his sonship. You're in the adoption. And you are an heir of almighty God. And a joint heir with almighty Jesus Christ. Your identity, seniors, your identity is in Jesus Christ. Therefore, the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. It's okay. So walk into this world where they don't know Jesus and tell them your identity in Jesus Christ. More importantly, live it out like it's really paramount to you. The second thing I want you to see about your identity in Jesus is you find identity in God's mentorship, not just man's dictatorship. Men dictate edicts to you, give you laws and rules and regulations. If you want to know what to follow, open up the Word of God. When I say mentorship, it includes everything from being discipled by someone to being in a small group, in a Bible study, being in a, a good, solid relationship over the Word of God with somebody who's mentoring you, covering, training you. You might not have Josh all the time, but he's there to mentor you. You have others that will pour into your life one-on-one forever and ever. Hey, listen, most every teenager up on the stage is working and serving in ADP sports and Happy Five Soccer. Hallelujah. You're being mentored and discipled by someone in that ministry. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And thank you for teaching Ben how to coach. You're doing a great job, Craig. Thank you very, very much. Sometimes it reverse backs the other way, you know, and then all of a sudden you get the, the young man teaching the older Your identity in God's mentorship is a whole lot better and has greater legs than you looking at man's dictatorship. Well, the guy at work told me to do this. The gal told me this. The guy, that's fine. But when you get constantly dictated to what you're to do in your life and you put that as to be more important than your identity, well, they told me what to do at work, so that's the kind of person I'm going to be. I'm going to work every day in the world and I'm going to make all kinds of money. That's wrong. You need God's mentorship in your life so that your identity in Jesus Christ is built up so that you then can follow and do what he wants you to do. When you say, I don't know what I'm going to do with the rest of my life, that's okay. Go ask the Lord, he'll tell you. I promise you, if you ask him, he'll tell you. Becca, you ask him, he'll tell you. You wait upon the Lord, he will tell you what exactly he wants for you. And when he tells you it, there'll be absolutely no question what it is. You won't have to question it again the rest of your life. It says up in the scriptures up here on the screen, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. You know this one? Lean on unto thy own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. It says also in the proverb of the day today, a man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. Proverb of the day today. Proverb 16 today, May 16th. That's some good stuff. And then lastly, your identity. In Jesus Christ, find your identity in God's friendship. Not just temporal relationships. Girls, watch out for the boys. Boys, watch out for the girls. And some of you who are dating in the youth group, watch out the youth pastor don't take you out. 
He comes over every yeah. He comes over every, every week every week with a list of people that we need to talk. To. Brownie, we got some problems in the youth group. I don't know what we're going to do. They say they're friends, but I don't know. I'm just kidding. You can't have a better friend than a brother and sister in the Lord. You can't. Someone that honors you and treats you properly. You go to church with, you have discussions about Jesus with. Those are your friends. Let's go a little further here. Because those are temporal, by the way. Do you know who God is to be your friend? Why don't you spend the next 40 or 50 years learning how to be God's friend and let him be your friend? It says in James chapter number 2 that there was someone that was called the friend of God. This is pretty strong. Why do I put it up there so that you can be the friend? No, open up the portals of your heart and the Holy Spirit teaching you and realize that the Bible says it of Abraham. He didn't set out at his 90th year to find out if he could become the friend of God. It shows me that God will be more than happy to be your friend. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. It says also up there out of Proverbs, chapter number 18, a man that hath friends must show himself friendly, and there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother, that is the Lord. There are friends that I have that are like friends in the Lord, and I'm so thankful for them. But I want you to know, young people, seniors, your identity in Christ, the temporal relationships, they're cool and they're good. But please, allow God to call you his friend because he wants you to be close to him so that he can say, you are my friend. Jesus Christ says, Greater love hath no man than this, than he lay down his life for his friends. That's Jesus saying that because he was about to lay down his life for his friends. As we finish up today, I'm going to turn this over to Josh here in a minute. But I want you to look up there and then I want you to join me in prayer. Identity in Christ. Today, I want you to pray about finding out who he is. Not just for today, but for every day. Today, I'd ask you to pray about finding out who he is in you. And then, find out who you are in him. Please bow your heads for a word of prayer, if you wouldn't mind, please. Our Father in heaven, we come to you. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we're reminded that our identity is in Jesus and founded in him. And these seniors today, they're called graduates, they're called seniors, they're called teenagers, but they're believers in Jesus, and they know you as Savior. And I pray that they would allow you to be their friend, and that and vice versa, they would be open for you to call them friend. I pray this morning in this prayer time, in this invitation time, that they would find a way to the altar, to wherever, to pray over where they're at with you, Jesus, to find that their identity is in him and him alone. And what you are and who you are in them can change the trajectory of their lives. I pray you bless in Jesus' name. Please stand.